Now that we know what a PBX is and what the public switch telephone network is, let's talk a little bit about cloud versus local infrastructure. So in order for me to discuss whether or not you should have your PBX in the cloud or whether you should have it locally, you need to know what a PBX is and what it does, which is what we've covered. But you also need to understand how cloud infrastructure works, which we haven't gotten to yet. I'm not going to get into all the details. I'm going to try to give you a very oversimplified explanation so you can grasp the basic concept of what cloud is. So let's say I want to type out a document. I have my Windows laptop. I go start, programs, accessories, WordPad, and I'm now running WordPad. WordPad is a program that is installed on my local laptop. It's installed on the computer that I have on my lap, and it's running on that computer. When I type out my document and I'm done, I hit Control S and then I save that document to the local computer. That is a local infrastructure. I'm running the application on my local computer. It's installed on my local computer. And when I save the output or the contents of that, it gets saved to my local computer. Now let's talk about cloud infrastructure. Let's say I open up Google Docs. If I open up Google Docs, when I'm done with I, I, I'm running the application on the Google server, when I'm done with that application and I go to save the document, I'm saving that document to Google Drive, which is located on the Google server, and that's that. So I'm running the application, even though I'm using the application on my computer, the application is hosted on Google server. I'm just using it through a web browser, and when I go to save everything, I'm saving it on, on the Google server. So that is an example of cloud infrastructure. So I'm using an application that's hosted somewhere else on the internet. I'm accessing it via the internet, and I'm saving the contents of that. Uh, via the internet. Now over the past five to six years this type of cloud infrastructure has become made more and more possible because of internet connection speeds. So if I'm just typing in a document and I'm just saving a document or a spreadsheet you can do that with any old crappy internet connection. But if you want to do real types of cloud computing where you do more and more advanced tasks you need a better internet connection because again the application is hosted on a server that's far away and it's being run on that server that's far away it's just sending information over to your local computer so let's just go over some internet connection speeds and some computer speeds so five or seven years ago the slowest thing inside of your local computer was your hard drive and even if you had a really really crappy crappy computer you probably had a hard drive speed if it was a laptop of let's say 35 35 megabytes a second, let's say. You have 35 megabytes a second of, of speed, which is, which is decent enough to run a lot of different applications. Not the best in the world, but decent. So that's 35 megabytes a second. So let's just move over to a calculator here, and let's convert that to megabits, which is what's often used to describe internet connection speeds. So this would be the speed of even a crappy laptop five years ago. You have 280 megabit per second. 280 megabits per second is going to be the speed of the slowest pile of crap inside the computer. That's the bottleneck. Now let's talk about internet five or seven years ago. If you had DSL speeds, if you had a DSL connection, very often you had three megabit per second down and 768 kilobits per second up. That 768 kilobits comes out to 0.7 megabits. So when you're running the application locally, your bottleneck, the slowest thing in the machine, is going to be the 280 megabit per second speed of your hard drive. When you're running that application on a server somewhere else on the internet, that 280 speed now has gone down to 0 0.7, which is it's pretty awful for, for doing just about anything. So that's going to be your bottleneck. Now, that, as internet speeds have gotten faster and faster and progressed, you're able to get faster and faster internet. So even with, you know, even with a low-tier files connection, now you get 5 megabit per second up. Now, 5 megabit does not compare very well to 280 megabit per second, but 5 megabit per second allows a lot more than 0.7 megabit per second. Further, you, you can also get better internet than that. It's, it's very common now to have an affordable FIOS connection. An affordable FIOS connection can be somewhere around, you know, you could have 35 up, 35 down for like 100 something a month now. That's, that, that's pretty affordable. And that allows you to get closer to that speed of, of a local machine. So again, you can be running these applications on, online on a cloud server and then it'll pipe the results or of the task that you tell it to run to your computer or to your phone. And this allow now it actually works better. Again, I'm not going to say that it works perfectly. I'm not going to say that it works as well as running something locally uh, all the time. But there are many things that you can do using that cloud infrastructure now that internet connection speeds have gotten better. And since internet connection speeds have gotten better, 
you can actually use these applications. Now, some of the benefits of it are that you can have a computer that's far more powerful than your local computer to run a lot of the intensive tasks, and then it'll pipe the results back to your client device. That's one of the benefits of cloud computing. So, for example, let's say that you have a phone. Let's talk about like a really old phone. Let's say the iPhone 3G or 3GS. Now, an iPhone cannot run Google Maps like in and of itself the like, and do all of the work. It cannot it's not an iPhone 3GS does not have the storage space to store every single map, every single set of directions, all the different terrains so that when you zoom in, you have every single con possibility of zoom uh, that that can't run on a phone. That's 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 not going to happen for a very long time. But what you can do is you can store all of that information. You can store all of all the pictures and all the map overlays and all the directions on a server. And then you can have an interface on the phone. So your crappy little iPhone 3GS, you know, five or seven years ago, you could just type in the address. You could, or you could say, I want to zoom in here. The phone then communicates with the supercomputer that Google has. The supercomputer that Google has then renders that map, and then it sends that rendered map back to your crappy little phone. So that your crappy little, it seems like your crappy little phone did all the work. In reality, your crappy little phone subcontracted that work out to the cloud server to do it. So the cool thing about cloud infrastructure is that you can have a really crappy client device, and that crappy client device can seem like it's doing these really, really cool things because it's doing those, because it's asking another server to do those things. So the whole idea behind cloud infrastructure versus local, local infrastructure is where everything is being done on your computer. So the application, for example, it's, it's, the application is installed on the phone. It runs on the phone. It deals with data on the phone. That's a local application. Now, something like Google Maps, that is a cloud application. So again, the application is running on Google server. I'm accessing the application that's on Google server, and it's just piping data to my phone as, uh, as I'm asking it to, to, you know, to render that data. So that is the difference between local applications versus cloud. So just at its most basic, just basic, fundamental, simple definition, WordPad and saving a document to your local Windows computer, that is a local application. And then cloud infrastructure, as simple as it is, is something like using Google Docs, typing your document in Google Docs, and then saving it to Google Drive.